Evening. Good evening. Well, it's evening for us. It's the night before um, we cross the wash. And we thought we'd just do a quick introductory video to the wash. Um, the next video will be the wash video. Um, but I think it's going to be quite long. So I thought we'd kind of talk a bit about what the wash is because we've been mentioning it in our vlogs for the last couple of weeks. I haven't really explained And we've it. had a few questions about it in the comments. Yeah. Um, so we thought we'd just kind of cover a few things off in this little short video. Yeah, so the wash is basically an inlet of the North Sea that comes in between Norfolk and Cambridgeshire on the south and Lincolnshire on the north, at least in terms of where the cities are that can connect up. And um, yeah, it's a, a really big bay, essentially. But unlike kind of the majority of bays you would see on a map, this one is very, very shallow. <laughs> um, it's a lot of sandbars and stuff, and except for in areas where it's heavily dredged out, there's not really shipping or anything. So there's more or less just a shipping route to Boston, one down to the Great Ooze uh, where there's Kings Lynn, and there's another route over to uh, the Neen and Whiz Beach. Yeah, not many narrow boats do this. Obviously other boats do. So that's quite unusual for a narrow boat to be doing it. I think we're the first this year, although I think most years there's a few that, Couple that of make trips. the trips. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've got a pilot coming with us, and I think he's the pilot that takes most narrow boats across. Yeah, Darryl. his name's Daryl. And uh, yeah, he's very helpful, and he's been doing it for quite a few years, and so you get lots of like earlier blogs and stuff in which people will talk about it. So it was kind of, he came highly recommended, and um, the local crew, like the um, gentleman, Ali, who runs the Boston Lock here in the Grand Sluice was like, oh yeah, you're going to throw on the problem. <laughs> and all the insurance companies were like, you got a pilot, great. And, and we're so, also yeah. going with one other boat. Um, we're going with Alan and Tina, who uh, are on the Wobbly Boat. Yeah, Wobbly, 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 Wobbly Limited, it says at the back. <laughs> the Wobbly Boat. Um, they're more active on Twitter than we are, but they're they're um, like an ice cream boat and, and a great couple. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think, I think in the past, Daryl's taken more than two boats, but he he did say that for this trip to the Great Ooze at this time, um, he'd rather just stick to two boats. I think if, if we'd said we wanted to go to the Neen, he might have taken another boat, but we wanted to go to the Great Ooze. Yeah, he has done some small flotillas before to Whiz Beach on the Neen. Basically, he said that to do the Great Ooze, he really doesn't like to do more than two boats. Um, kind of under any circumstances because although Kingsland itself is like a busy shipping area and it's fairly easy to get through the run up to Denver goes through some fairly narrow areas with some definite um shoaling problems and a couple of low bridges so so just to keep all boats safe it's best if it's just two so he can he knows exactly where both boats are at yeah any one time yeah we've also got some extra crew coming along um uh, Alan's brother is on their boat and I think David from Cruising the Cut's going to be on their boat. We are going to have the pilot on our boat and Lorna from Lorna Jane Adventures on our boat as well. The, uh, we also have some animal passengers. We've got George, Bosun on the other boat, as well as two cats. <laughs> and um, one of them's coming now. <laughs> yes, Stubby is walking along at the moment. Hello. He has decided he wants to come along here and have a little visit. Or are going to be not. in the vlog? Yeah, he's, he's just... We've got the way so they can see. There, there's just a tiny little corner of him. That's, that's Stubby. <laughs> Famous for being tougher than you think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so it should, be, it should be good fun. I'm strangely not as nervous as I should be, although I am nervous. And um, I'm probably more nervous than I am usually. But... <laughs> we basically got given six days um, when it could be possible because of tides and then during that six days we've been waiting for weather um today's day three so tomorrow is day four of the six so hopefully all goes to plan and we can just head out tomorrow yeah because basically the tide moves back 45 minutes every day so what he tries to do is he gets it so that you have a good morning leave time mm -hmm. and that's sort of the first day of the window and then it gets progressively 45 minutes further back each day mm -hmm. so if you went on the first day of the window it'd be a little bit early but you'd definitely arrive at night nice sunny moment of the day so because we're going towards the latter half we actually have to go as far as denver but instead of going actually up the lock at denver we're going to be going to the pontoon at the base of the lock and then waiting overnight for the next tide mm -hmm. so that we're not going through on a rising 
Um, well, there's a sort of rapidly rising tide and a bridge to get under, and we want to be under there with plenty of room. So, um, yeah, if we'd gone earlier in the week, we'd have just gone straight up right. and been up there. And if we missed We this... also weren't going in the dark, because yeah. if it was a couple of days later from now, we'd be arriving at nighttime. Um, and if we miss this window, like if anything happens that we can't go tomorrow, we have to wait a couple of weeks for the next window. Yeah. Um, we've been doing a few preparations uh, to get ourselves ready. We've given the engine a service. Um, we have made, or Michael has made, a light. Yeah, so you do have to have your navigation lights in full working order. Um, the white one on the rear and the red and green on the sides of the boat. Um, you're supposed to have those no matter what. Like, the fact is a lot of narrowboats don't actually necessarily have them, but but you are supposed to have them and they do need to work. And on top of that, you need an, a top-mounted all-around white light. Um, and it's okay if that's sort of bodged together, but it has to be visible up to about two nautical miles minimum. Technically, for our length, it should be three nautical miles. Um, the reality is it's just for if we're arriving at night or if, yeah, or if something goes completely wrong. <laughs> so I've rigged something up that will put a light up about uh, four feet above the boat. What Which was that blend. pole? It was like a shower rail, wasn't it? Yeah, it's it's an LED light that that's an all round navigation light that I got off of Amazon. A shower rail, um, the two sort of mount points for the shower rail, but I've modified them so that the screws actually go through the shower rail portion, and uh, and some wood that I've created a little kind of clamp together piece, and um, and then just a lot of cabling and a twelve volt connector to plug it in so that we've got power to it. So, um, yeah, it, it is not like the most amazing light, but it'll work. It'll do the job. Yeah. Carol also recommended that we got our diesel uh, clean. Polished. Oh, they polished. Call it polishing. Because, um, obviously, uh, in theory, the boat's going to be moving around at different angles to what it usually does, yeah. which can churn up like if there's any debris in there. Uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it's quite um, difficult to find anybody due to COVID who is doing sort of mobile polishing. Um, and the one fellow that I contacted was having a laugh on price. <laughs> uh, that was just like a, all of that to run fuel for filter, eh? Hmm. Well, <laughs> is it made of gold? And do I get to keep it? Um, yeah, so, so basically we didn't get the polishing done. Um, however, Daryl did come out with a syringe and we dropped it to the bottom and checked and we have like maybe a tiny bit of water in there, but there's no real sedimentation on the bottom or anything and the water is just in small amounts. And we've replaced the few filters, so we should be good to go. Mm -hmm. um, have we done any other prep? Well, I mean, other than sort of moving everything around. What do you mean? Well, like we've rearranged things on the inside of the boat. We put the coal down so that we keep the weight off the top of the boat. So we've got our um, uh, center of gravity as low as we can. We've just moved a bunch of things. Like I've I've cleared out the little um, vent holes at the back for water to go through. Uh, I'll check the ones at the front quick, but they're huge, so they'll be fine. Mm, we bought um, a life jacket for George, finally. Yeah, we did get a life jacket <laughs> for George. Uh, we've got our life jackets easily reached. Um, at the end of the day, there's not really too much that you need to do in terms of like real preparation. Mm -hmm. uh, the anchor's at the back ready to go, but it's been like that since we started going on to the Trent again. Yeah. So it's just, you know, there, you don't have to get any kind of particular safety um, certification or anything on here like we did with crossing the Manchester Mersey. Ship canal. Yeah, because we were going under the Manchester Ship Canal, Peel Ports had specific requirements. We we're just going into Kings Lynn and we're going through Kings Lynn. Um, the, the shipping authority there does not have any you know, as long as you come through with all your lights, your running lights on at night, you're fine. Um, there is a set of moorings at Kings Lynn that you can pre-book. They're not exactly cheap, but they're available. And if we were going up on a later date and had to overnight there, we'd have to pre-book those. But as of right now, we don't need to. Yeah, and the pilot also was quite... Um, like, he also said that he wanted to take us to Denver because getting from Kingsland to Denver isn't easy, so he didn't feel like he could just get us to Kingsland and then leave us. Yeah, so, so he'd, he'd have been overnighting with us if we did that. But mm -hmm. because we're leaving earlier in the window, not in the last kind of couple of days of, of window, and so therefore we're not arriving at nighttime, 
we're able to make it as far as Denver uh, in one go. Yeah, knock on wood. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's no particular safety that you have to do, but we did want to check the engine and do all of the normal engine things. Of course, if you've seen our previous video, we lost a throttle cable. Um, when we replaced the throttle cable, I also replaced the shift cable so that there's fresh new cables in there. We've also got spares. Um just in case it happens again, which I yeah, like. which hopefully it will not, especially on the wash. And we also replaced the um, the belts because they went like a month ago. Yeah, yeah. So the belts are fresh. Um, I did go in and retighten them and make sure that they're all good. Uh, and I did the fuel filters and oil filter, you know, just sort of a normal service. And I did the engine change, uh, sorry, engine oil change as well as mm -hmm. the transmission oil change. Those are all topped up and good. Um, went down the weed hatch today, found a whole bunch of nylon webbing, so that's good and cleaned off. And, uh, yeah, so it's basically just making sure it's all in good mechanical shape. Doing the fuel polishing, if you have found any sediment or serious amounts of water in your tank, was a good idea. Um, then you need to call your insurance company. The insurance companies are all going to be different. We're with a company that has a sort of pre-made rider so all you really do is call in the day before and um they just take the details and verify that you've got a pilot and they're you know yeah we can cover you for one day two and they'll make it and they'll move it within the window so that you can cover one journey or a return journey or mm -hmm. whatever you want to do we do have a vhf <laughs> and we're licensed for the vhf um i believe that that daryl has his own vhf and so you don't really have to worry about that too much for the boat that has the actual um pilot aboard you do technically have to go have vhf because the first thing we do is we leave boston is go through the boston tidal barrier and you have to call them and let them know that you're making a passage through um so that they don't raise the tidal barrier and <laughs> flip you upside down and teach you all sorts of things about <laughs> physics you want to have a ladder on board because one of the things that we will do Hopefully. about five to six hours in if the water's in sort of the right state when we arrive is uh you drive the nose up onto the sand and you're able to get off and walk around for a little while so it's a good idea to have a ladder to allow you to get on and off the boat otherwise you're going to be trying to do it the hard way that, i hope we can do that yeah um, just because George will like to pee. Apparently. Yeah, George, George will want to get up and pee. There's also potentially some seals out there and stuff, so that'll be interesting. The, uh, yeah, other than that, there's really just the choice of which route you want to take. Essentially, there's sort of a northbound to southbound route where you can go from Boston to either Wisbeach and the River Neen, or you can go to Kingsland and then through to Denver on the Great Ooze. Or, of course, you can do it the other way around. For me, either. From either one of them. I assume you can go from the Great Ouse to the Neen and from the Neen to the Great Ouse as well if you wanted. You could, yeah. You could cross the two. Although, based on the channels that I've seen for the dredging, you'd pretty much make the crossing all the way over and then come over come, and come, come all on. the way back. So that might be kind of a miserable trip. Um, yeah, and uh, there would also be the option of going down just as the channel that we'll be on, just as the river with them meets the ocean, there is a hard right turn onto the River Welland, mm -hmm. and you can go up the River Welland, uh, there's a lock onto the Welland itself, and then there's also the Glen, which splits off from the River Welland. Uh, sadly, we're not doing that, um, even though there's a silver propeller location down there at Spalding on the River Welland. Um, Fobney Lock is still out of commission, and so we're going to have to figure that out at a later date. Um, probably by a rental boat. Yeah, probably. Unless we come back here, which we might well do, because it's blooming nice. Yes. The only other thing that needs to be arranged is the Boston Sluice itself, which is run by the Canal and River Trust, instead of the EA, which runs everything down on the um, Wisbeach or King's Link. Well, actually, it gets a little bit complicated, isn't it? You have the Boston Sluice, which is run by the Canal and River Trust. You then immediately go on to the Boston Authority, then you're under EA waters when you get over to the River Neen or to the River uh, Great Ouse or, in fact, to the Welland of the Glen. So you have to have an EA license to cross over and do that. We have gotten a gold license. Because we knew you were doing this. Yeah, because we're doing this. We know we're going to be doing it for a while. But you can also get a short-term license for when you arrive. The Canal and River Trust needs 48 hours to get the Grand Sluice Auk open for you. Um, Daryl already called ahead and did that. He arranges all of that as part of the service. Uh, and I double checked. So yeah, <laughs> that's, they're ready for us to go through tomorrow at 9 a.m. So I hope this video has been useful to watch alongside the main wash video. 
um, or on its own, or just watch the wash and not this one. Yeah. <laughs> now you know more, what the, more about what the wash is. It has one other notable thing about it, which is that it's been bombed by the Germans. Um, some of that sand is apparently full of, of unexploded ordnance. Also, King John died after going swimming in the wash. Okay. Yeah.